afternoon, South Africa. A very warm welcome to you. I'm Jeannie D. And I'm Bonnie Mbouli. Today in The Loft, we're entertaining one of South Africa's most famous and iconic white women. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> I know, wait, I lied. Sorry, we actually have Tani Yuvita Besaid Note in the thank Loft. You. Or thank Doga. you. Or Peter It's actually both. We have both of them in the Loft, and we're going to be chatting about everything from fashion to every single career highlight. And also, we're going to be chatting about the Movember movement. Mm -hmm. And I'm Portuguese, mm -hmm. so I love to celebrate this month. And of course, that started yesterday. <laughs> now, last week, the World Health Organization announced that processed meat causes cancer. Now, we were freaking out because no, that don't meat that can't be baked. Lives. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of misinformation flying around the internet. So we brought in a registered dietitian to just debunk some of the myths. We said the exactly. record straight. Speaking about November, we have the biggest cash in the world in the kitchen today. Danila. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. South Africa, welcome back to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. It's great to have a brand new week with you guys. And I'm excited to be in the kitchen today because I don't grow much of a tash. I'm going to have to use the fake props throughout the rest of this period of the month as everybody tries to uh, build awareness around men's health concerns. Joining me in the kitchen today is my favorite person in the whole world. I'm going to use your hair, actually, because it's more like a real tash than anything else. It's Claire Wynn Stanley. Claire. So I'm what? mildly offended, mildly offended. Oh, really? Okay. Well, what are we making today in the but kitchen? My Hopefully... beautiful locks are not moustache <laughs> props. Oh, well, that's kind of... Oh. I'm joking. I'm totally kidding, totally kidding. What are we making in the kitchen today? Because I hear it does no processed meats in it. No processed meats. So we've got a beautiful tender stem broccoli, lovely in season, mm. sweet potato hash browns with a little egg on top, stack it all up, and it's Oof. an all-day breakfast. Sounds absolutely amazing. If you guys want that recipe and that shopping list, you know the website to follow, afternoonexpress.co.za. It must be drooled into your brains right now after the amount of times you guys have watched us right on Afternoon Express and the amount of times you've gone to go and find it on the internet. It's an absolute world out there. I love those recipes. Take them home with me. Make as many as I can. But we are live South Africa, so make sure you get hold of us on the show today. 083-913-3728 is the number you can dial. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Just go and search for us, Afternoon Express, and you will find us. But some exciting news today. Seeing we've got Tani Evita joining us uh, on the show. She likes to sometimes say things that she probably shouldn't, and we'll find out what those things are in the ad breaks. We're taking all of your questions on Periscope during our ad break today, so make sure you go and download the app and then go and follow the link on our Twitter feed. And speaking of which, Jeannie standing by with Tani Vita Bezed Note. Thanks, Danilo. Today we are honoured to have one of South Africa's biggest icons in the loft. Hailed as the most famous white woman in the country, she is a former Buddha Macy turned ambassadoress of Babeti Consueti, turned political activist, turned icon of change and reconciliation, turned mother to the Rainbow Nation, and she's done all of this with poise and glamour. She is Tani Evita. Welcome, Tani. I'm so... Who are you talking about? It's you, it's me? all you. And it's always been you. I have to tell you, though, we are actually twins. Because it all started in April 1982 with Adapt or Die. Was that not when Evita necessarily... That was when I was put in the public domain by a third-rate comedian. <laughs> 19 years ago, it was against the law for men to wear women's clothing. Yes. And it's an Afrikaans. Yeah. And it was fish, it was the hell. In. And I remember saying to PV Boerta, can't we do something? He said, we've got too many things on our plate. And then yes. I suddenly thought, oh, my God, is it so terrible to be impersonated on a stage by, by somebody who nobody will ever go and see anyway? It was a big forget. <laughs> I mean, it's still happening now. <laughs> you were so, so wrong because now you, you literally have become the mother of our nation. And also, you befriended such amazing people who were, and, and you've almost become one of the most influential people of our country, but the people that you made a French, amazing friendships with, Nelson Mandela, yeah. Bishop Tutu, yeah. take me through those relationships. What was it like? Well, first of all, Nelson Mandela, you must remember, he was the Osama bin Laden during my youth because he was supposedly the worst terrorist in the world and we were so scared of him. We, we didn't know where he was. He was on Robben Island and we didn't dare think of what life would be like if he ever escaped from Robben Island. Mommy, leave order. Look, you see, fear is a funny thing there. Mm. It always makes you think the worst, and suddenly it comes true, and you realize this should have happened years ago. And of course, Nelson Kholichlachla Mandela, he became one of my inspirations. I cooked for him. Do you know that? I went did you really? What yeah, did you make him? Mescat. It was the first thing he did when he became president. He was in Libertas, you know, which is the president's residence. Yes. It's now changed its name to, I think, Madiba Ungungluvu. And he phoned me and he said, Mrs. Besaidna, there's a big room 
in this house called Kitchen. I don't know what to do there. <laughs> do you know, my dear, I went into his kitchen. I cooked for him. It was so easy because for 27 years, all he had was bread and water twice a day. Oh, and so no. all I had to do is put sugar in the water and jam on the bread, and he was so grateful. Oh, shame, but now, but he, nobody eats, now there's nobody eats bread or sugar. Well, they can't <laughs> afford it. <laughs> it's very, very bad that people can't afford to really enjoy themselves. Yeah. So we must help them. And I'm always there to say, just a small little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down. Absolutely. And of course, Bishop Tutu as well. Tutu. You've also got a very tight relationship. Do you know, I am always, when I see him, I saw him last week, and he's frail, yeah. but he's full of energy and, and so sweet. And every time I see him, I say to him, Arch Tutu, every time I see you, I want to cry because, you know, we said we in the National Party called him the most terrible name. We called him a communist. My God, he's an no. Anglican. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he calls me O.C. Oh, really? Yes, he says, O.C., you know, you people in the National Party didn't treat me half as badly as the ANC is treating me today. Oh, süß doch lieber. Wonderful, wonderful inspiration, especially for our young people who are looking for inspiration among leaders now. Absolutely. It's very really difficult to find it. Absolutely. Now, you won one of the most incredible awards. You were given, I think it was called Living Le Legacy, Living of Legacy, Le Living award. Legacy 2000 Award. Now, that award had previously been given to... Hillary Clinton, yeah. Princess Diana, Diana, and now and now you, Betty Davis, who could think, and you've got better eyes than, than Betty <laughs> Davis. But what, but what does it feel like to be honoured with such an incredible award and being in such amazing company as well? It's the company, it's the company, not just the company of the people who won the awards, but you know, those awards are given to women who have changed the face of confidence among women. In yeah. other words, women who've just got on with doing what has to be done. Yes, of course, you've mentioned the famous names, but you know how many millions of women there are who aren't famous, yeah. who every single day are doing things that change the world to the better. And we have many of them in South Africa, many, many women. And I was so honored as a South African, as an Afrikaner, and of course, as, as an optimistic person, which is not very fashionable, but I got my award. They didn't give me any money, but the Americans don't really Where have money. Where was the award ceremony it held? It was in San Diego. Amazing. Which is full and full of South Africans. Do you know so many South Africans have emigrated to the United States? Yeah. And the IQ of both our countries went up. <laughs> That is fantastic. <laughs> now, speaking about moving to such amazing places, do you reside in Darling still? No, no, no. I live, well, I live in various places. I live in, in Pretoria because as a member of the African National Congress, I must be a, uh, not far away from when people need me. My mother, Oma Osavania Kokobinia Pochenpul, lives in Darling in the old age home. Amazing. And so I spend every weekend there in this lovely little place called Ivita Peron. Yes. It's the old Darling railway station they've named after me. And... Uh, and I love it there. I love the West Coast. I love the people. I love the whole reality of not being in the city all the time. Of exactly. course, the city is the heartbeat of, of commerce and of politics, course. but it's nice to be out in, in Darling. You know, Darling is, is English for scutty. <laughs> I know, I do yeah, know that. Yeah. But you know, the world is changing so quickly, and I'm so, I'm so, I love to see that you moving with the times just as quickly. You've actually just started your own new web series as well. Take us through that. I'm dying to know. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned it. It is so interesting. I just decided, you my little grandchildren. I've got three little grandchildren, oh, little born please. threes. They're Congrats. not black, they're not why they are Barack Obama beige. We love. And they said to me, Gogo, what are you going to do to communicate with us young people? Because your experience is important for us, of but course. you know, young people haven't got time for older people, and quite rightly so. And then I suddenly thought, there's the internet, the highway of the future. And so I have a very, very good young man in Darling called Stefan Hurter. He's a brilliant uh, person with the, with the internet. And so every Sunday morning we record a very short, you know, three, four minutes, because, you know, the attention span yes. on television is very small. <laughs> um, and it is called uh, Evita's Free Speech. And it's about the news of the week. It is now on YouTube. It is on Daily Maverick. And it is on our website. And then, of course, all the lovely things that I have on YouTube are in our little thing called Evita Seperon on YouTube. So, wow. yeah, can I skate cake? Omar's cake? Omar must cake. Is Divine. Like We're going to be back in a bit with you as well. Don't go away. No and uh, I'm just completely in awe of you because you don't age. It's absolutely fascinating to see. Hang, 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 hang tight for, with us on the couch. <laughs> After the break, we're going to do a review of the uh, recent SA Fashion Week. And with Movember kicking off yesterday, we take a look at how you can help raise awareness for cancer. We'll be right back. Clicks. Feel good. Pay less.
Lovely to have you back with us here in the Loft on Afternoon Express. Local fashionistas were in for a treat recently as SA Fashion Week stole their hearts and Instagram feed of all those addicted to fashion. We couldn't attend all the shows in person, so we thought we'd have our own runway review right here in the Loft. Ladies, get ready to play fashion, please. And gents. Yes, so we're starting off with Gert Johan Kutseer. And of course, this is for autumn, winter 2016. So always when they do fashion weeks, they do it in before, like before the summer for the mm. following winter. Yeah. No. So this is what we can expect to be the hits of and the this, runway. And this year his cause is water. Yes. yes. Now I love Gert Johan Kutsia. He always does such amazing, so amazing things. Every year he dedicates his collection to a theme. Yeah. This yeah. year's theme was water because we've also got to start saving water before they start water shedding. Apparently <laughs> so. water shedding has started in Joburg. Yeah, in Joburg, Joburg definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of his collection? Beautiful and very tall. Ach, liever Arden, I walk schoon. A kut kan vrouwens nog lopen schoon. I am so proud of so much design talent in our country. Of course, I was always very blessed with Chris Levine. Chris Levine always designed beautiful things for me. But my son's friend, Moff de Bruin, he does things for me. In fact, he said I must wear red today just yes. to prove that the economic freedom fighters are not that original. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's uh, look at our next designer. Okay, so this is air, pronounced like the air you breathe. Yeah. And they're incredibly original, but they only design in black. In black. So, which means they've got to come up with different textures every season. Did they, they make all the outfits for Game of Thrones? Is that what they're... Is Game they of Thrones kind of isn't all in black. <laughs> <laughs> but they do amazing stuff. They I work with wool and leather. Yeah. I absolutely love, love all those looks. That is so interesting. So there are various... You know, they say there are various 50 shades of black. Not yeah. just 50 shades of grey. <laughs> yeah. And it's true. I mean, it is so wonderful because black and white isn't really black and white. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we are not white. We are pink and also beige. And exactly. black and black and black, brown, dark. I mean, it is so fascinating to see how, how mixed up we are when we actually call colours things that they are not. Exactly. But, I mean, to see those designs. Oh, look at that beautiful blue. Yeah. Oh, our, next, our next designer is Mansu by Palisa Makugung. Oh. Now, Palisa has always done, like, very strong, bold, mm. Afrocentric pieces. Pieces, yeah. But she's moved to a more retro, kind of millennial feel now, which I'm Definitely. really digging. So that little bummer jacket's amazing. Mm. That the only thing I knew about fashion uh, up until this point was that mixing prints was going to be the new thing for this season, but it seems to have extended into the next season too. So print on print, we can see more of that. Mm -hmm. How much more do you know about fashion? Uh, that's expensive, <laughs> is what I know. <laughs> that sounded Don't get it, girl who likes fashion. Do not do that. It sounded so okay. <laughs> So our next collection is by Wake, Wake. and Wake mm. is absolutely amazing. Like sure. they've got the very bold hounds, tooth collections, very arty. Yes. He's he's very very unique. What I feel do you like think that belongs in a frame. I think it's yeah, wonderful. It's I think it's also very good for a woman of my age because truly one has a chance to hide a multitude of sins. <laughs> <laughs> and it is also looks comfortable. And it is, uh, I love that, that wonderful, again, the blue and the black together. Liver yeah. Arden, mm. yes, very, 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 very inspiring. Ooh. Do you have any, any fashion advice for us? Do you know my only advice for anybody about fashion is you decide what to wear. Everybody who says what you must wear is only saying it to make money. <laughs> you wear what makes you feel lovely yeah. and good, and if it's an old pair of tackies, you'll be surprised how the neighbors say, oh, quit, we better wear old tackies, otherwise Jeannie we're not Dean fashionable now. Every time I walk into that, she says, you should not decide what you wear today. No, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You <laughs> look <laughs> very <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Sistok, you look so sweet. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you have a girlfriend? Thank you, Tony. No, not at the moment, well, actually. No wonder you dress so badly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is very lovely to hear. At least I don't have a uh, sort of of like a fashion stylist who doesn't screw things over for me. Anyway, guys, during the month of November, the month formerly known as November, men and even some women now, although the latter is not highly recommended, from all over the world are dedicated to growing their mo to support prostate cancer. From the wisp to the rock star, the undercover brother to the abracadabra, and even the notorious trucker. Different styles are grown, groomed, and cropped into a variety of shapes over the month of November. Take a look. I am Joan, I'm 33 years old and today we're going to be shaving my beard off to create more awareness for November for general men's health, you know, physical, mental awareness, uh, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, and uh, I'll be sacrificing 
my beard for the cause. On 30 October, Joe would say goodbye to his beloved beard, his defining feature, and his link to his grandfather, Joseph Asherbell, who died of prostate cancer just two months ago. Joe's beard is about more than just looks. It was also a source of inspiration for his opa. It all started with my grandfather. He was diagnosed with cancer last October. And um, I was visiting him in the day, and this guy was down in the dumps. And uh, I made a small challenge and I said, he can stop fighting cancer the day his beard is longer than mine, knowing that I'm never gonna shave my beard. His 88-year-old grandfather's mood immediately changed from depression to determination as photos of their beard challenge were posted on Instagram and garnered support and encouragement from around the world. Opa Joseph managed to grow a 15 centimeter beard before he passed. Now, Joe is an ambassador for the Movember campaign this year and literally taking his grandfather's illness on the chin, shaving his beard to raise awareness around men's health issues. At the moment, I'm feeling uh, both anxious, nervous and excited, confident. Um, I know it's going for a great course and hopefully we can get people, uh, you know, get, get them talking about the men's health awareness. Um, the nervousness comes from going home, seeing my three-year-old daughter, the the one who's only seen me with a beard. Um, so hopefully she doesn't freak out too much when she sees me later. To me, it's a bittersweet moment because I love his beard. Um, but if there's a great reason to shave his beard, it would be for this cause. And I'm really proud of him, and I think it's great. Joe's got an iconic beard. I mean, that thing is like, like this already. So um, I do think uh, it's for a good cause. And yeah, that's why we support him. And I think we, we urge all the people to, to support this initiative. This sacrifice is just to say that to the guys out there fighting cancer, fighting mental illnesses, uh, health issues, just to say, man, we've got your back and we're there in full support trying to raise money, trying to raise awareness for, for men's health. There was no turning back for Joe at the Crow's Nest Barbershop in Johannesburg as all 22 centimeters of his beastly beard was expertly removed in 10 very short emotional minutes. It's customary for Movember participants to start the month clean-shaven and grow a new moustache or beard to raise awareness about prostate and testicular cancer, as well as other men's health issues. For a man who has always had some form of a beard in recent years, surrendering so much facial hair is a complete transformation. Feels weird. <laughs> um, it's gonna take some time getting used to this. So at the moment, it's, it's still new, it's funny. I think uh, the real feeling is going to set in a bit later today when I see my children. It's a really big change, but he's always been handsome, so I'm just really proud of him. For Movember, I'm going to try and do the, the classic twirl, do a nice stylish gentleman's moustache, or just go full out big moustache, you know, Magnum P.I. style. Fortunately, Joe's bearded friends also opted for a shave, so Joe wouldn't have to go at it alone and to show their support for his mission to get more men paying attention to their health. So guys, to make sure that this wasn't a lost cause, I ask you please go support Movember, go, sp go support Men's Health. Um, let's get the awareness out there. And just, this is for the guys to tell them we got your backs and uh, hope it helped. You can help us by donating to mobro.co forward slash joeblack8. We're raising funds there. So, yeah, we'd appreciate it. Thanks. Hmm. Wow. Interesting stuff, eh, guys? It really is important that I think the Mo Bros have a good cause behind it. And this guy seems to have a really good cause of his father being the inspiration behind it. Because men's health it's issues, bad. we don't talk about this stuff, guys. Mm. We don't talk about our, our issues. I'm very happy to talk about the fact that Joe looked exactly yeah. like George Clooney. <laughs> he's, de he's definitely our MCM for the day. De Joe, Ooh. you are a man crush for Monday <laughs> on Afternoon <laughs> Express this Monday. You can go Stunning. and follow him out. I'll make sure that you go and support his cause as well. I know that you guys create these little teams and they all support each other at the, as they do always. But I do think men's health issues is a thing that we need to speak about as men because I remember there was, I had something called a testicular torsion, which is completely natural. It doesn't, it happens Tell to people. Tell us about it. What is it? <laughs> okay, well, about a week ago, or two weeks ago I had to end up in the ER for something that's basically a testicle itself can twist around it its twists, own cords yeah. yeah and it cuts the blood supply off to the testicle and it can be amputated if it's not treated properly and I was a bit like maybe I mustn't tell anybody about this because maybe it's a thing us. of course I wouldn't you tell did. you guys but it's you didn't tell me, me. <laughs> <laughs> because
just, it happens to me, and it wasn't something that I could have done. It wasn't like something people have funny thoughts about. It's nothing can happen. It's purely natural that goes on. But I was too shy to talk about it. So I went straight to the ER and found out. He's like, dude, if you didn't come in, within three hours, we would have had to have amputated your testicle if it didn't and, and, and twist itself. So it's serious things, and guys don't talk about this stuff. So Movember is a so rad platform. Sorry. It's a rad platform to get this uh, sort of message out there, because guys don't like talking about health issues, right? But yours was quite clever. It untwisted itself. Lucky, yeah. lucky, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> don't get yourself in a knot anymore. <laughs> so guys, on that note, make sure you get checked. Know your numbers. Sign up. Grow. Give. Move. And join the cause. Together we can change the face of men's health. For more information uh, or to sign up to as a Mo Bro or a Mo Sister, visit Movember.com. Sure, Mo Sister. Do you need I a don't quite now. know what that would look <laughs> no, like. No, I'm scared. I'm just probably sort of my legs open. Just saying. Show us what you'd look as a Mo Sister. Yeah. Yeah. No, do you know how Portuguese girl teases her hair? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> After the break, Danilo makes us a delicious broccoli and sweet potato steak dish. And we take a look at the recent report by the World Health Organization, which stated that processed meat can cause cancer. Oh. No! Oh. See you after this. <laughs> Whether it's your first apartment in the city, a trendy suburban townhouse, or that dream family home on a golf estate, there's a home for everyone on private property. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Lovely to have you back with us. So we're in the kitchen now with our favorite chef and food stylist, Claire Winstanley. We're we'll making something delicious. It is an anytime dish that you guys can make either as a brunch, breakfast, lunch. I'd even say have it for dinner because it sounds so good. It's a broccoli and what stack? Tender stem broccoli and sweet potato hash browns. Ooh. Stacked up, topped with an egg. So mm. I don't know about you, but like often on a Sunday, you don't feel like cooking. I always have a fry up, so yes. literally eggs on toast. So if you've got a little bit of sweet potato lying around, let's glam it up a little bit. Because we all have some sweet potato Are lying you? around to make a hash brown. No, but in your, in your, like, your potato <laughs> drawer. Always. Okay. Well, let's get started on this because I'm very we'll excited to see. Leaves. By the way, are you going to make your first question? has to be, are you going to make your eggs? How are you going to make them? Are they going to be fried or are they going to be poached? Fried. Okay. That works. Okay. Fried? Now I'm just interested because I like a poached eggs. Imagine just cutting it open and just all that yolk just pouring all well, down I the Well, I like stack. my eggs to be soft fried. Okay, so it's, you still the get that oozyness. Yes, drip indeed. down the sides. Okay, okay so while I make the mix over here, we're going to start you off with the tender stem broccoli. So okay. it's exclusive to Woolworths. It's delicious. It's actually, strangely enough, I don't know if you know this, it's a mixture between Chinese kale and broccoli. That's oh, what, how you get it. That's interesting. And it's already yeah. been washed, so what do I do? Just pop it out into the tray, and then you're going to take some beautiful parmesan or hard cheese and just grate that over. Okay. That goes into the oven until it gets like nice and charry, and mm -hmm. the, you know the fronds start to get a bit dark and great. That's so I'm assuming really... it gets its name just from the fact that its stems are tender, because so generally what... broccoli has got that big thick. Well, this bottom. is the cool thing with the tender stem is that you there's no wastage. You eat from the stem to the front, the whole thing. You just eat, and it's it's not you don't get that bitterness like you mm -hmm. would from a normal broccoli base. I see. Okay, so in so the hash brown side is we've got like I said our sweet potato. So this is going to be the start. So just grate it, just on a normal box grater. Um, you want to do this quite, you know, not too far in advance because mm -hmm. the the sweet potato, will, it gets, no, it gets very brown and oh, gross. Okay. So that goes in there. And then just because I'm obsessed with fennel, fennel goes gets mixed in here. You don't have to put fennel in if you don't want to. No, but I it love does fennel. add a stunning flavor to yes. it. A it's little like bit a licorice mm. Yeah. Um, all sorts of herbs can go in there, whatever you like. I'm going to add some spring onions because that's also... You know, it's a little bit milder than adding fresh chopped onion in there. Yes. Um, and then to kind of glue it all together, a little bit of flour. So the flour, it's, you know, it's tricky to kind of estimate exactly what you want. Depending on the amount of sweet potatoes you're using, just kind of put a little bit of flour, mix it up. You're basically just using it to glue As it together. Okay, yeah. I see. So by, by I do way, a little so bit at a time. Stop Looking you there. Great. Is that cool like that? Just, leave just it like a little that? bit of salt and pepper and okay. we're winning. Ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go for about one egg there and then just mix it up. You're going to see it starts to kind of cake together a little bit and then you know you're in a good place to nice start to make the making the cakes. You don't want it to be wet. So also if you do make your, grate your sweet potatoes ahead of time, pop it in a bowl with some lemon juice and that'll stop it from browning, but then make sure you get all that liquid out. Yes. Like get it Others out. Others is going to become a mush. You'll Ooh, be making no, the you, like you're going to make a, like just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're going to make. It's okay. just not going to happen. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour because I can see it looks a little bit too wet. So hash browns, hash browns traditionally are just fried up bits of egg, like flaked pieces uh, potato. of egg. Potato. Potato, sorry, I mean egg. Potato. 
Quite a piece There's normally egg in there, so you're not far off. Okay. I'm going to steal some of this from you. So, so we're adding a really flavor, a whole bunch of flavors to a traditional hash brown. I just, okay, I really, I think it's, I guess, I don't want to say trendy at the yeah. moment, but it is kind of trendy that everyone just wants to eat sweet potato, yes. not potato. Well, it's got healthy, it's healthier for you, so. Yeah, I just really, really enjoy the flavor. It's mm. sweet, it's delicious, and I think, you know, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to say, for me, it doesn't feel as heavy as it eating doesn't. potatoes. It doesn't, I see. I so see. this is looking good. I'm going to get dirty, even though... My hands are clean. We're going to just start making little cakes here. So just smush it together like this. I don't know if you can now that my hands are all dirty. Sure. Take some butter and pop it into the pan over here. How many little blockies? Uh, let's go for two. This is going to add the, the you know nice color to the hash browns and then a beautiful flavor. You can also turn the heat up a little bit. Oh, that's pretty hot, but OK. <laughs> what Claire says, Claire gets. <laughs> So that gets on, then you're just gonna slowly take a few, just sort of smoosh it in your hands like this. And you want it on a medium heat. So if you're gonna put it on a too high heat, they just yes. sort of char and burn, and, and then, then the inside doesn't cook. If that does happen, don't panic. I know sometimes people don't know the temperatures of their stove tops. Pop it onto a baking tray and get it, finish it in the oven. Okay, don't so bake it keep off. cooking it on the pan. So you want it to be as crunchy as possible, basically. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You... But you don't want to burn it. So okay. start medium and it will get golden, it will get crunchy. Just take a little time. Before How long does this take usually burns. about? Because um, I'm going to, uh, probably about eight minutes. Eight minutes four. aside? No, four aside? No, about four or five aside. Okay. You want to leave it, don't fiddle with it. Let it sort of form a, a seal on the outside yes, and then... Flip it over. Okay, well, we're going to continue with those. Is there anything else we need to get done before we go into the next no, we're step? Good. No, those we're are going to go in the oven later and okay. we're going to keep on frying these. So, we'll show you the rest of this recipe later on, but don't forget afternoonexpress.co.z is where our webs are there. That website and recipe is. I'm distracting you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Want to do the rest of the links to the stuff? <laughs> no. Right now, standing by on the couch, we have Barney. <laughs> Now, last week, the World Health Organization released a report which stated that processed meats such as bacon, sausages, and polony can cause cancer. There has been a lot of panic on social media and in the news about this report. Joining us to help better understand the reality of the situation is registered dietitian Alex Royal. Welcome to The Loft, Alex. Thank you, Bonnie. It's lovely to be here. Awesome. So what was in the report that made everybody panic and freak out at the thought of getting cancer from processed meat? There was huge panic. So the WHO, as you said, the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. came out saying that processed red meat is a grade one carcinogen, meaning that it will cause cancer. But the big, the flurry of anxiety was more around the fact that that association was compared to smoking and cancer, which right. is definitely not true. Right. So processed meat doesn't cause cancer. Well, if we look at the evidence, mm -hmm. there's been a host of associational <laughs> evidence looking at hundreds and thousands of people, and it does increase risk for heart disease, diabetes, and yes, cancer, but not to the same degree that smoking does. So if you're a smoker, it increases your risk for cancer by 2,500%. Sure as opposed to eating 50 grams of processed meat a day, which increases your risk by only 18%. Right. So you can't really compare the two. Mm -hmm. What is a carcinogen? A carcinogenic? A, yeah. a carcinogen is a type of chemical or mm -hmm. a form of radiation that attacks the genetic makeup of a human or an animal. And it alters the metabolism or it causes cellular proliferation and that leads to cancer or tumor cells. Right. What is a healthy amount of red meat or processed meat to eat a day? Well, looking at the research that I've just kind of explained, anything less than 50 grams of processed meat a day will reduce your risk down below 18%. So I would say avoid processed meat where mm -hmm. possible. Where possible. Where possible. And when you do have processed meat, it's probably a good idea to look at the source. So make sure it's free-range, hormone-free, grass-fed products. Right. What alternatives are available to processed meat? Um, well, remember that the WHO spoke about processed meat being a grade 1 carcinogen. Uh -huh. Red meat is a grade 2A carcinogen, meaning that it, it likely can cause cancer, or probably can cause cancer. So the association is lower. So rather opt for red meat as opposed to processed red meat, Otherwise, it's better to go for the less contentious sort of meats or, or proteins like right, fish right. or eggs or, or chicken, which contain just as uh, good a source of right. vitamins, vitamin B12 and zinc and iron compared to your red meats. What are some of the food that's available out there that is not carcinogenic? Is there any? 
There are, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, you get the foods that, the, like the superfoods, so your yeah. berries, cacao, goji berries, that actually reduce your risk of cancer. cancer. And also foods like uh, green leafy vegetables, like your broccoli, um, which contain chlorophyll, and also reduce your risk for, for cancers. Right. Are there any methods of cooking meat that cause less risk of getting cancer? Yes, absolutely. So cooking red meats at a high temperature increase right. your risk because they produce um, hydrocarbons and amines, oh. which actually are carcinogenic themselves. Then also your smoked or cured meats, they um, interact with the heme iron, with the nitrisation, and that's toxic in itself. Right. Sure. Thank you so much for yeah. debunking the myths. Basically, I can still eat bacon. You can, yeah. every so often, <laughs> as long as you are at a good weight and you eat healthily most of the other time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> After the break, we're on the couch with legend himself, Peter Dirk Ace. We'll be right back. Sustainable fishing that leaves fish for the future. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Satirist, performer, author, social activist, Peter Dirk Ace is an icon in his own right. He was awarded South Africa's prestigious Truth and Reconciliation Award in 2001, as well as honorary degrees from Rhodes University, the University of Cape Town, and the University of the Western Cape. In 2011, Ace was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Teddy Award at the Berlin International Film Festival, and in 2012, he received the FW you declare goodwill award please welcome peter dirk ace you. hi <laughs> so wonderful to have you thank you thank you i mean how incredible has your career been i mean just endless one-man shows i think just you endless you, endless <laughs> yes, yes. it's like seven thousand performances how do you keep on going and and like just staying so exuberant you know, it helps to have been unemployed since 1975. <laughs> no, truly, when the National yeah. Party government said, you may not write anymore, this unbeskoff, this fieslik, yes, a communist, yes, a terrorist. You know, if I'd been a yeah. communist and a terrorist then, I would have been the Minister of Education today. I know, and, you know, I know. <laughs> uh, and so, basically, my life depends on what I do. If I do nothing, nothing will happen. And if I do something, everything can happen. How did you have the... The, the, the braveness, I suppose, to, to, to be able to just stick to your guns and say, this is what I'm doing, this is what I believe in. Because, because you could have offended a lot of people. Look, offending people is what I do. I like yeah. that. Because if I offend you, that means I've rattled your cage. Yeah. That I don't agree with your opinion. So yeah. what's, who's right here? I don't want to demean people or insult people. Yeah. That's different. But, you know, it was so, I suppose, I was behaving like a, like a spoiled child. I will the oomst the donor and mark, you know. Yeah. It was a case of really pissing people off. Yeah. And I think I did it very well. You, you did. Know, I think I gave quite a few of those old Bruder Monas a heart attack and they <laughs> died. That was great. <laughs> but humour is the weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. You know, it was serious stuff, but you had to find a, a way of laughing at your fear. Yeah. But sometimes, and I, and I watch this a lot in comedy, sometimes to be able to have that power of that sense of humour in attacking somebody, that it does offend them in a way that... Don't you think it's because they're not smart enough to know what's actually going on, so they react with anger? Yes, of course. Look, Ronald Reagan laughed first. Yeah. Nobody could make fun of Ronald Reagan. Yeah, yeah, Margaret yeah. Thatcher didn't even know what people were laughing at, which made a fabulous folk yeah. thing. And today's government is uh, unfortunately not as relaxed as our first democratic government. And I had a great time with yeah. Tani Evita Pesedna interviewing Nelson Mandela, um, uh, interviewing uh, Freni Jinwala, uh, Toki Sekhwala. Everybody wanted to laugh and make fun yes. of serious things, but be in charge of that extraordinary, well, fear, yes, the bad things, yes, but there's always a good thing that's better. Yeah. And of course, I see a big difference between comedy and humor. Comedy is a joke. Yeah. Sadly, I can't tell jokes because the truth is funnier. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> now you're doing a, a new show that, that honours your audience. Take us about your new... Yes, you, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people who actually mm. come to the theatre um, to watch a live show. I mean, this is a live show and this is rare on television. Yeah. They usually say pre-recorded live. No. You know what I mean? This is live. <laughs> We're so, live. <laughs> so I have... It's called an audience with Peter Dick ish And I have 20 boxes... Yeah. on stage with numbers and the audience will choose a number and then okay. I have to do what's in the box 
which means I have virtually no control over the show. Uh, it's, it's actually terrifying because usually I know I start in trousers and end up in a dress. It's all off the cuff. It's off the cuff. The, the, the characters, the sketches are very structured, and of course yeah. there are characters, and I have to do them as well as I, as I have been known to do them, but there's no time to get ready to be in them. Like okay. Evita, as you saw, there was Evita Besaitner sitting on this bench exactly. with me, and your and your and everything, okay. and took a lot of time, and now I've got to do it like in front of the audience, like in a second. Now, I know how long it takes me to get ready. Will you give us an example of how, you, of how quickly you can become Well, for example, if Evita. they choose the, the Evita box, yeah. okay? Um, I have to find some way of, look, I'm a vitrot, I've got nothing, I've got no eyebrows, I've got no eye makeup, I've got no lipstick, I've got no nothing. I've got to find a way of in entertainingly, with the Trans audience watching, forming. transforming into Evita in like under a minute. Oh, and my there's word. only one way I could do it, and that was with help. Okay. And so I asked Archbishop Desmond Tutu to help me. Hello, dear friends of South Africa. This is me, the real Desmond Tutu. If I said to you that in South Africa we have the most extraordinary woman called Evita Bezetenhout, I would be lying to you. Evita Bezetenhout is not a woman. Evita Bezetenhout is a legend. And because we in South Africa can survive and enjoy Danny Evita. We are stronger and wiser. So, be warned. Here comes Mrs. Evita Bezaydenot. Ha <laughs> ha, that is tremendous. And it always has to end with a dash of perfume. Oh, of course, and it's Chanel this, number five, no, no a, doubt, of course. That was a present she got from somebody because she has her own perfume which is called Jomur. Jomur! And she has a fragrance for men that they can wear in November when they grow their moustaches called Jomur Hom. <laughs> and she's working on a fragrance for older women called Jomar Samur. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That was absolutely sensational. And let me just tell you, the the it's at Theatre on the Bay, so come. Theatre on the Bay yes, in Camps Bay. we'll be there. Theatre on the Bay in Camps Bay, starting from when? From tomorrow night. Okay, so, fantastic. And I wear one moustache on stage, and that's P.V. Uh, Puerta. In Puerta's celebration moustache. of November. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right now, though, let's cross over to the kitchen with Danilo. Sure, absolute legend in the loft with us today. If you guys have always wanted to know where the name e Evita Bezaidno came from, apparently it was inspired by Eva Peron, uh, who was very involved in Argentina as an actress, and she really did take over the world in some in some interesting ways. So go and find out her story too if you want to know more about Evita Bezaidno's story as well as Peter Dirk Ice. Now in the kitchen today we've got nothing with ice. It's all hot food here that we've got. Um, what we're busy making a stack with uh, like sweet potatoes in here, broccoli. We're gonna crack an egg over the top of that too. What more is there to do? Because I see the broccoli's gone in. So the broccoli is beautiful and charred. We've got our sweet potato hash browns. You can see they're a little bit golden, nice, nice and cooked inside. And now crunchy. we're gonna yes indeed. Good. And now we're gonna make a little bit of a let's call it a dressing if you want to. Okay. So we've got some creme fraiche over here. You're going to get some of the Dijon mustard. Okay. So let's go with about I like to have more creme fraiche than mustard. So let's go to three of those. And how many of the mustard? One of those. And then okay. you can just mix that up while I squeeze in a bit of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. You can if you want to. Why why don't you use another type of mustard that is a little bit sour, more sour, like um, one of those whole grain uh, Dijons. Well, whole grain mustard, I don't necessarily like sort of crunching on the little whole grain little seeds. Okay. I do like Dijon because it's a mild and creamy flavor. Full of flavor. Yeah. Mm. So fennel, like we put into the hash browns, we're going to not waste the fronds. Those are going to go in there as well. Let's just snip okay. that up with some clean kitchen scissors. Sure. And that's just going to complement the hash browns. <laughs> and then we've also got some eggs frying over there, ready to go. Oh, I um, see. Look some at you. a little bit, like I said earlier, some a little bit softer than others. This, you know, if, I don't know how you like eggs, Dan. I like, like them very soft because they, if they're not running over my dish, I'm a bit upset. So you can like take the hash one and kind of slap yes. it up and eat mm. all of it. Those so last little drips and drabs, my favorite part. Looks good. Okay, so okay. I'm going to take one of these. Now we just start stacking. Can you pass me some of that? There we go. That's all And yours. I don't know if, how are you with scooping up eggs and keeping it all together. Oh, no, okay. That I can do. Yeah. Well, wait. I say ah. that now until you I get that You didn't get the last part of that sentence. I guess I'm going to steal a soft one from you because I want to use the soft one to show everyone how good it looks. Okay. Mm. So nice layer of that. Okay. Hold up for one second there. A layer oh. of that. Then we're going to take some of our tender steam broccoli. Let's try and get some of those together. Sure. Holding for together. a second. This thing is heavy. You're, okay. No, no. It is rather heavy. Wait. One more. One more. Let's probably do about two or three. Another little bit of this. 
This mm. is like, it really is delicious. Oh, it looks delicious it's already. It's so delicious. And the worst thing about having a hash brown with something like eggs is if you don't have something that's, that's liquidy or something that's got a little bit more texture to it because otherwise it can be really, really dry. So I'm glad well, you got the creme Well, this is the thing with sweet potato, it really isn't dry. Sweet potato sure. has, uh, I don't know technically, but I, it, it feels like it's got more moisture in it, so it doesn't, it doesn't give you that like dryness Can in I go? mouth. Yeah, I'll go for it. That goes on top. Ah, oh, push it, push it. Go, Claire. <laughs> don't lose it. Got it, well done, nice. <laughs> Burning my fingers. Okay, and please do me a favor. Can I this do this for you? This one will be mine, so you can touch the egg. <laughs> can I do this for you? Can I crack the okay, egg? Okay, let's season. I want to crack the yolk over it. A little it. bit of salt and pepper. Okay. And let it drip over the sides. Is it gonna? Is it gonna? Is it gonna? Boom! Mm, lovely and oozing egg on top I have of our stack. It looks up, delicious. We'll do a wrist five. <laughs> Don't forget to go to our website afternoonexpress.co.za. That is where you can find the recipe and the shopping list for this delicious dish right here on Afternoon Express. We're going for a short commercial break. When we come back, we've got an exclusive performance right here in the loft, and they are three tons of fun. Groundbreaking treatment for acne. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Welcome back to the Perfect Monday right here on Afternoon Express. Now, over the past 11 years, these curvaceous divas have been in high demand throughout South Africa and across the world. Joining us in the loft is three tons of fun, but you guys are also three tons of sexy, yeah. you're three tons of cool, you you're three tons of earth. Dang, ladies. I love you oh, <laughs> you guys can kind of stay. Guy. <laughs> I saw you guys first perform once in Cape Town at a, at a market that was going on in Cape Town, and you just blew me away. How did this whole group come together? Well, we were actually auditioned. There were like 60, 70 girls, and we were the three lucky, yeah. lucky girlies. Eh? Mm. They peaked us. Yeah. They did. They <laughs> knew. We just had, we just had it. Someone day. Kelly knew what they were <laughs> looking for. We wanted the for. light of their life. So <laughs> this is it. <laughs> you guys have got a really cool performance live for us in the loft today. What is the song called, and what is it about? It's called it, Usibali, mm -hmm. brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And I heard the word lobola being thrown in there. Oh, Some yes. man is going to pay a lot of lobola yeah. for this, girl. Yeah, basically telling yes, a man you Mahala. can't just get anything for free. Uh -huh. You have to pay lobola. Nothing but for mine. you guys, extra, we know. Oh, yes. 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 An extra yes. few cows. Not not yeah. Imported cows. Oh, I yeah. see. So there might be those special <laughs> Chinese ones that have been yes. massaged. Yes. Oh. We see you. We're not going to let them uh, say any more. We're going to let your music do all of the talking right here on Afternoon Express. Ladies, the floor is yours. Blow us away. Sister, tell him, tell him, no more, no more fat and sad. He must, he must pay love Uh 
one afternoon express. After the recent protests at universities across the country, we take a look at the results and what lies ahead for tertiary education. Another feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.